Exactly one year ago today, I shaved off my hair for the very last time and since then it has been an insane grow out period where I monitor my hair as it grows and this is it exactly one year later. Look at this growth! It's almost shoulder length. Today, we're cutting it back off. Let's go. Shaving off your head completely is one of the greatest ways to analyze how your hair grows and how quickly it grows. And for the most part, I have been super surprised at how my hair has been growing. It's been incredible to see my natural hair color come out again. And overall, it's been really, really amazing to just see hair in such a short, genuine state. That being said, hair does tend to grow evenly all over the head. And because our head is a sphere, the hair that reaches this length on the top means that the hair at the bottom will also reach that same length, creating this extremely layered haircut. It is giving a tiny bit of a 90s vibe, which to be honest, I'm a bit over. I really do want to go for a more modern look. And so today I'm going to be trimming off this whole lower portion of the hair, joining the whole back of the hair to this length. Here. While I do love to use a variety of cutting tools normally, today I'm actually going to be sticking only to using ornate beautiful tools because as you might have known, I am a sucker for maximalist beautiful designs, prints and elements and even in my own brand that is something that I take super 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 seriously and so today every single product that I'm going to be using is going to be extremely ornate, detailed and beautiful to look at because that is who I am personally. <laughs> I will spend the extra dollar to get something that is super gorgeous. This thing is actually a barbering clipper meant to be used around the edges to get super, super insanely sharp lines. But it is actually really amazing if you want super definition. And it is also all gold, all beautiful. And it's got this incredible design element throughout the whole thing. Let's go. Look at all the blue hair that is still stuck in all of it. I swear the Roomba that I have that goes around my house notoriously picks up colors of hair that I'm like, where did it come from? I. That's how sharp it is. Let's do my favorite process ever. Let's go. So because I want to use this as my guidelines, I'm actually just going to work backwards, which isn't done often in the hairdressing world, but I do just want to kind of just take this as my guideline, as well as my chin, not go shorter than this invisible jawline. I also obviously don't want to go shorter than my own natural hairline. I think that is a cute length. I definitely think we could go shorter. As you can see, it does descend further than my chin and I do kind of want it to go like that. So we're gonna go a tiny bit shorter. One thing that I'll definitely have to tackle is my hair is quite thick, thank God. But that means that anytime I go for a short haircut, you can just see that it just puffs right here. It doesn't obviously stick elegantly to the back of the head, kind of like this, it does tend to want to come out because there's a lot of bulk that is pressing it outwards. So that is something that I'm either going to have to tackle with thinning maneuvers or with styling products and styling techniques. We're going to see. Very rough, very rough. But I'm just trying to figure out if I want to go shorter. I told you all of our products are going to be extremely beautiful and extravagant today. Definitely not minimal. This is definitely not minimal. Do we go shorter? I feel like we should just go shorter. <laughs> Look how much better the bulking just got. Also helps that I've brushed it through. I still think it needs to go shorter. I think this... Why am I arguing with myself like I would speak to a hair type? Honestly, it sounds like there's two people. One of them is hairstylist Stella, the other one is client Stella. And I'm arguing with myself like, no, I think it, I think you're not doing a good enough job. It needs to go shorter, which it does. It, it does. 100%. Yep. Okay. I 
I appreciate the fact that I look like a double head. Drift of the haircut is definitely getting there. We're definitely getting that super almost French. We're getting that same very visible neck effect and I personally really like that. Obviously some people might prefer genuinely a more sophisticated approach but I, I really like especially this very sharp blunt edge that I have going on. I'm going to clean it up now and smooth it out as much as I can. See how some of my hairs underneath weren't straight and now I just brush them down and they need to be all recut. One of the things that is very important when you do any haircut that reveals the neck is to clean up the neck if you want a super sharp, almost editorial haircut because that is going to be one of the things that is going to be super noticeable. I know that many people will be like, <gasps> because that is more of a barbering thing that is done, but you do have to clean up the hairline and the nape of the neck so that you have a super clean, very finished looking end result. This hair is so soft. It's so soft. I think what I'm going to do to remove the tiniest bit of bulk over here, I'm going to just take very gentle sections like that and just trim it up a tiny bit just so that when it falls, it falls with a curve, kind of like that. The color of my clippers, the color of my scissors. Yes, we care about how our tools look. Oh my God. If you are a hairdresser or a hairstylist or you invest in your tools, comment down below whether you are more likely to buy something based on its appearance or based on its function or both. Because I am someone who will always pay extra to have things look a certain way. Like these are in the same brand. This is Amazon, this is like local. So this is the haircut that we got. I think it is so much better now because we've just cut off that weird mulleted end. Again, it, it could be a very much a style, especially on longer face shapes and darker hair. It can look super, super glamorous by myself. And especially because it's summertime, I was like, I need my... I'm not going to go ahead and style it. I do want to just flatten this bit out. And then I'm going to show you an incredible makeup look that I want to do to finish this off. I think I want to do hot rollers. Give me a sec. So these are hot rollers. It used to be super, super popular back in the 90s. And it was one of the things that I was meant to study in my curriculum to become a hairstylist because I studied quite a while ago. They're not very used nowadays. I think people do genuinely prefer Velcro rollers or just using their hair themselves after a blowout. But I do think they could be really, really fun if you want to just put these in, do your makeup and then take them out. So we're just letting it heat up. They are heated inside this vessel. And then you have three different sizes. Ooh, get three different size curls. such a grandma in this video. just had all of the rollers set into the hair that I want. I'm gonna leave the rest of it kind of straight or else go on with the straightener, but we're looking aged at the moment with literally everything. So I do want to modernize it a tiny bit with my makeup. And the reason I didn't do my makeup for this video is because I wanted you to see this brand that was sent to me through PR. So I'm unaffiliated with them. This is genuinely PR. As you guys know, I am such a lover of everything maximalist. My entire brand kind of features that very maximalist vibes. And so I relate and resonate with very, very maximalist brands across all other beauty categories. 
And this makeup brand is the most beautiful one I have laid my eyes on. So I wanna say that Western beauty brands tend to go for super, super minimal touches. And I've noticed a lot that Asian brands tend to go super opposite. And this is a Shanghai-based makeup brand called Kaleidos, assuming Kaleidoscope. This is their lip clays. These are their blushes, their fabric. These are fabric. And then look at the products. Oh my God, oh my God. This is another one, this is fabric. This is velvet, this is a velvet eyeshadow palette. Again, it's called Kaleido. Oh my God, I literally just now realized that's the ovaries, they're ovaries. I wanna say, I wanna say these are the ovaries. Okay, this is it, super, super beautiful stuff. Again, I'm super unaffiliated with them, but they're so pretty. These are their highlighters. Everything is done slightly like a video game and also a bit industrial. Like these are tin cans and they're the most pretty stuff. So I'm going to be doing my makeup with them today because they deserve it because they put so much thought into their design <laughs> let's get into it i haven't done a makeup video in so long oh my god we're starting with base they sent me two of their complexion kits and again look at these they're extremely industrial these ones are actually super compact everything else is not they're quite bulky but we've got our medium complexion kit and our light one but I'm gonna go in with medium. I also have really pretty brushes. So <laughs> let's get into it. I really, really appreciate using products that have so much thought behind their packaging, their aesthetics, because this is gonna be something that's gonna be present in someone's life. And I'm like, this brand <laughs> is it. Okay, and then because we wanna accentuate the haircut, I'm gonna go in with the slightly cooler toned contour right here and i'm just gonna put it under my jaw these are their blushes the camera is not doing any of them justice because they are extremely extremely vibrant normally this is the one i always go for but i i want to stop being such a baby and go for colors that i typically don't wear and then see how it goes uh, it's also extremely pretty it's also barbie season so for a highlighter i'm gonna go with space age gifted is heavenly give me a sec as I said, heavenly. So this is the palette that I'm gonna be using today. It is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful shades, but I'm resonating obviously with this incredible pearlescent shade. And I actually wanna do a super dark eye today, which I rarely ever do. Eye primer, also by them. And now for the thing that is going to tie it all together, black liner. But this one's like colorful because they didn't send me a black liner. Finally, for lips, they sent me two of their collections. This one is their Vivid Brights collection, and this one is their Nudes. Both of these are absolutely beyond stunning. The rule of thumb typically is, if you have fold or dark eyes, go nude. But I am going to just show you their brights just, just once. So they have this insane velvet inner packaging, which to be honest, I might just steal for my brand, but then that would make it a tiny bit less recyclable because you can't recycle these types of packagings. It's a velvety rubberized finish. And these are their colors. Fiamma, 
which means flame in Maltese, rubino, which probably means ruby in maybe Italian, sounds Italian. Queen of the Night, which to be fair, is one of my favorite lip colors to wear in the history of ever. And the final color that blew my mind because I have never seen a commercial makeup brand release this in their regulars lip kit combo, black. I think they are so ballsy for doing this. And when I saw this, I was like, holy shit, I love them. I love them because very, very few commercial colorful brands release a black one as part of their regular collection. Normally it's like, you know, you've got your specialty colors. Then they've got nudes, pink Himalayan, very beautiful pink. This one is called Tundra North, even though it would look beautiful, holy shit. And Echo Valley which is their darkest nude. They are stunning. But I thought I was going nude and nude would look beautiful. Let's not kid ourselves. This channel will run by Senacini, who likes color too much. Colourpop lippy pencil in On Ice. Overall, how confused are you by this look? And the fact that part of it is giving dominatrix and the other half is giving grandma. <sighs> sexy grandma. I need to figure out how I'm going to turn this into the sexiest hair look ever. So far, it's giving golden girls. I'm gonna try and fix it and then show you the finished results so that you have a fun transformative process. So three, two, one. Grandma Stella's back. You know Stella's actually a really popular grandma name here in Volta. <laughs> I don't know. I think I could be a really, really, really hot grandma. Look at this look. I did not think I had it in me to uh, transform that grandma here into something a bit less grandma here and a bit more fun. I actually really, 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 really dig this. I think it's got a super androgynous, gorgeous effect to it. It is not too feminine, it is not too masculine, but I think just all of the combinations together somehow just work. And if you want to know how I did it, I literally just... <laughs> yeah, the way this brush just fixes everything. <laughs> So this is the look. I am so much happier that I trimmed it. I think there's so much more me and even the hairstyle is just, it's kind of fun. It's got volume. It kind of kicks it beautifully backwards. And then I've got just these beautiful front pieces just to, that just add a bit of drama to the hair. I know it's a bit of a controversial look. So let me know down in the comments what you really think of it. I would love to read them when I've got nothing else to do. All of the products are going to be linked down description box below. Everything today was super, super beautiful, maximalist, and there was so much detail given to the aesthetic portion and the visible portion of the product. So every single one of them is going to be linked down below. Big thanks to Kaleidos for sending me such a beautiful PR kit. Again, I'm not affiliated with them, but I do highly urge you to try them out because they are not only exceptionally fun functioning products, but they are also so, so stunning. And as always, I am going to be linking my own personal brand down description box below. I also highly urge you to sign up to our newsletter because we do have a brand new product launching in September. I am going to be giving you all of the details very, very soon, but you guys are so, so, so not ready for something so spectacular. So do sign up to not miss any of the launches. And of course, they are going to be launched here as well. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, join the Stutter Fam, let's learn a thing or two together. And as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you'll give it a go and I will see you in my next video.